Besides looking for better integration and evolution internally, we must also expand our capacities to anticipate the challenges in the longer horizon for the Ministry of Home Affairs and Singapore and systematically develop and bring in new capabilities. Therefore, the third area where we should look at is preparing for the problems of tomorrow while dealing with the problems of today. This will allow us to raise our game to another level and be ready to meet the new threats and new challenges when they come up. The nature of crime is changing and in very deeply challenging ways. Globalization and the interconnectivity of the internet age increase the dangers from transnational and cross-border crime. They create new kinds of crime, cyber crime. We'll have to work more closely together with like-minded countries and with international cooperative networks such as Interpol and ASEAN. In this respect, the opening of the Interpol Global Complex in 2014 is most timely. The Interpol Global Complex will drive research and development into new generation global policing services. This will provide us with the opportunity to collaborate with a much broader and deeper pool of international security experts. We need to pursue technology for our work aggressively. Given Singapore's manpower constraints, technology will always be a key partner and enabler in our operations and for every officer to do his job better. However, this is not just about buying the latest technology. It's about knowing what works in our environment, what serves our purpose. This will mean understanding technology and thinking deeply about what technology can offer. This may require creating solutions customized to our local contexts and challenges. It will require us to have technologically informed users in our departments as well as operationally savvy technologists and scientists to tap on. I have no doubt that this is well within our means to achieve. The Home Team has already done well in developing and adapting technologies to meet its needs over the past decade. Biometrics technology used by ICA has cleared travellers faster, while at the same time strengthening security by ensuring that the traveller is indeed the right person, using the right passport as verified against our databases. The SCDF has also developed a raft of innovative equipment and vehicles to suit our operating terrain such as with the Red Rhino, Fire Bike and Water Mist Gun. Indeed, many countries have expressed an interest in acquiring our technologies. Looking ahead, I would like to challenge the Home Team to develop new beyond-the-horizon technologies to deter, detect, investigate, prosecute and convict. We need particularly to stay at the forefront of cyber and computer technologies, forensics, vision systems and analytics, and command and control systems. Where possible, we should tap on our network of partners and organizations within and outside the public service. For instance, in March this year, MHA concluded the Automobile Barrier Challenge, an event we co-organized with NUS to generate future concepts and designs in this area of protective security. Fourth, our people. Everything we do eventually boils down to our most valuable asset, our people. The home team needs to recruit and retain able and dedicated officers and provide them with the necessary skills to fulfill our mission. <coughs> Quality is important as home team officers have to think on their feet every day. They have to respond rapidly to handle dynamic situations, contain them, and prevent them from escalating or getting out of hand. Therefore, it is imperative that our frontline officers must always be effectively empowered and trained. Where possible, we must find ways to upgrade the skills of our officers. As much as we would like to have many more people, the numbers are finite, especially if we want to maintain quality standards. Hence, we have to invest in systems and technology that increase the effectiveness of our people, make full use 
of the suite of abilities and skills they have, and at the same time, develop them, give them greater challenge and satisfaction in their jobs. The Home Team Specialist Scheme was introduced last year to grow deep specialist capabilities in criminal intelligence, forensics, and protective security. Since then, the scheme has proven to be popular and has been a useful augmentation to our capabilities and to our manpower. There are more than 150 officers currently in the scheme, and the number is expected to grow. We'll also continue to look for opportunities to develop and enhance the education and career opportunities for home team officers. It's clear that our social landscape is changing quickly in terms of our demograph demography and values. In such a landscape, community engagement will be even more important than ever. So this is the fifth and final focal area that I wish to highlight. Our success so far has in no small measure depended on the public trust and support for the home team. In a recently conducted safety and security survey by MHA, we found that almost 93% of the community rates their partnership with the home team positively. More than 92% of the respondents also expressed confidence in the government's ability to ensure the safety and security of Singapore, whilst nearly four out of every ten arrests today is made with the assistance of the public. With the internet and social media becoming an increasingly prevalent tool of communication, our departments have sought to take their engagements to cyberspace. Almost all our home team departments have an online presence on Facebook. Today, the police Facebook site has almost 120,000 fans, and I'm told is ranked 11th of all Facebook pages in Singapore and 65th of all government Facebook pages in the world. Our latest edition is the Home Team News. It will be a good platform to share our real-life experiences in operations and challenges with a public that is increasingly active on cyberspace. This will help the public understand what our Home Team officers do and help us forge new partnerships and reinforce existing ones with our citizens. Fans and friends are a valuable resource in both virtual and the non-virtual world. Our most valued fans and friends are, of course, our volunteers. I'm very proud to say that today we have more than 16,000 people who are part of the Home Team family as volunteers. Home Team volunteers are a special breed of people. They are ordinary members of the public who make a quiet but extraordinary contribution to the Home Team, both individually and collectively. We want to celebrate our volunteers in the Home Team family, and underscore how much we appreciate their contribution, helping us to shoulder the mission of keeping Singapore safe and secure. It gives me great pleasure, therefore, to announce that we have set up a Home Team Volunteers Network. I am also happy to announce that this Home Team Volunteers Network will be chaired and led by Associate Professor Ho Peng Ki. I'm grateful that Penki, who has been an ardent champion for volunteers in the home team for years in his capacity as the Senior Minister of State in the Ministry of Home Affairs, has on retirement from political office agreed to volunteer, to sign up as a home team volunteer, and second, to be the chairman of this volunteers network. So thank you very much, Penki. Our volunteers will continue to be engaged and deployed through the various departments. But at the same time, the network will allow us to develop an overarching support system which seeks to enhance opportunities for training and development, cross-deployment, or even new volunteer opportunities within the home team according to each individual's aspirations and motivations. The home team has done well and risen to the challenges but there is still much work to be done. I look forward 
to working together with all of you and your other colleagues as we strive to keep Singapore our safe home and secure nation. Thank you very much.